Yo, what's up guys? So we're going to be checking out the new Summon Divine Bow in action. The new card that uh, is going to make your opponent pretty salty. But first off, the image of the card doesn't technically exist in Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro. There's like a glitch right now. So here's what the card actually looks like. It actually has really cool artwork. But we're really here to check out the in-game gameplay. But I just wanted to mention that as a heads up. That the artwork, if it doesn't show up on your screen, don't worry. It doesn't show up on mine either. Uh, at least as of right now. It'll probably be patched and fixed very soon. But anyways... What it requires is 2 plus monsters with different names, and it's a Link 4, but what it does is its original attack becomes the number of materials used for its Link Summon times 800. And then, when your opponent activates a monster effect as a quick effect, you can make this card lose exactly 800 attack, and if you negate the activation, you can only control one of them, but, I mean, if you use enough monsters to make this card in the first place, you're going to be able to shut down your opponent so they cannot Yu-Gi-Oh! Because it's not a once per turn, which is really where this card becomes very powerful. Now, it also does not destroy the card. However, it's supposed to lose attack to the point where you can just, you know, summon a monster and attack over it. But here's the problem. You combine that with the Crusadia card, and then they are forced to actually attack that, which uh, we'll showcase off later here in the gameplay. But basically, yeah, you make this card... And your opponent is going to have a very difficult time to deal with. Now, in this instance, we did use the Ario Okami lockdown, basically. And that's a really strong way to make it so your opponent cannot really do too much. But to be able to have this many negates over here, if you have anything above, like, three negates, your opponent more than likely is not going to be winning. Uh, because, well, that's just the way the game goes. But uh, you'll see some errors over here. I think it has to do with some, something related to the card image. But uh, anyways, we're going to go ahead and attack our opponent. And he's going to have the option uh, to pretty much just say GG. He's going to go ahead and make a Grista here. Falco is going to go ahead and resummon itself. But unfortunately, no Ultimate Conductor Tyranno coming out. Although that would probably be stopped by another one of the cards if it was to attempt to activate that effect. Anyways, had it had come out. But uh, yeah, we'll kind of go over a few different plays. You don't have to always go for the real common, by the way. That one's just kind of like a, a Lombo combo that we showed off a while back. And we're showcasing off two different builds of going for the Divine Bow. Like I said, I wish the artwork worked in here because it does look really cool, as you guys can see. But uh, anyways, one words with the combos. Uh, like I mentioned before, the key thing that you want to go for is the Mech Knight Crusadia Ashram because... Um, your opponent's monsters cannot target other monsters for attack. So basically, you have that monster that is just simply going to be boosted up to the point where you're going to be able to have maybe two to three negates. I'd say that would be the ideal scenario in this instance. It's going to be uh, three negates because it's times 800. Uh, but th they have to attack this card. Now, I'm also wondering if there's any other card that you can just utilize. Because I'm, I'm wondering, like, can you just, like... Equip Axe of Despair, and I'm pretty sure you should be able to, because it doesn't have to, like, lose 800 of its, like, original attack. So, I'm pretty sure that if you guys wanted to, right, you could think about boosting up this card's attack with other cards, and perhaps have more negations instead of utilizing more cards to actually make it in the first place. But, that's another option. Um, technically, if you were to use another card to maybe boost up this card's attack too that can be an option so think about that but this card actually has a lot of potential especially if you happen to make it up against certain matchups where you know that they're going to have to use monster effects for example like any like synchro variant deck needs to activate lots of effects to uh, essentially go off and because of that well you can go ahead and just make the divine bow and then just say well i'm shutting you down of three effects good luck because most of those monsters are pretty small anyways but yeah, some pretty good stuff. Definitely a great addition because it is a generic card. Uh, so any that can make it. It is also a Link 4 with pretty decent zones. Although the up zone is usually not what I would say is too good in Yu-Gi-Oh. But um, obviously if you're negating all their effects anyways, it doesn't really matter. Not really. Um, but again, what makes it so good is the uh, effect of it not having to be once per turn. So we're going to go ahead and just go right into the Ashram. Institution or another target, and then once again make the summon divine bow Apollo Ursa. And uh, that's game, dude. Like, there's very few decks I would say that can deal with this specific board because remember, um, your opponent can't uh, if this card is linked, summon your opponent can't target it with card effects, and then they can't attack anything except for this card, and then this also negates stuff. So, puts your opponent in a situation where. 
Uh, you, you need that mirror force, Kappa. <laughs> uh, because it does not negate everything, okay? It just negates monsters' effects, but it doesn't destroy them. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and see the Predator Plant engine here, and you need to be able to have a lot of spammable monsters, so I think the Predator Plant engine is, is pretty good. Uh, and, and mixing in the Gen Knight also will give you those additional monsters that you really need to summon in order to give that uh, card enough uh, materials to boost up its attack. And then, again, in addition to that, go for the Crusadia so they can't attack over it. Um, you could probably even make something else um, combo with it. I was even thinking, uh, when I first saw the card, I was like, dude, this card is actually pretty insane, right? Uh, if you equip, like, the, um, the Moon Mirror, at that point, they're not going to be able to attack over it. Uh, although you'll have to somehow increase the card's attack. I'm sure that there's probably some other card that has some interaction, like, during each standby phase, it gains extra attack. Um, heck, you could even consider, like, mixing them with, like, Evil Eyes might be a little bit more difficult, but, um, at that point, well, you have some more options in that deck. Alright, so now that you guys have seen some gameplay, let me go ahead and give you guys the deck profile. We did see two different builds, so I'll showcase off both of them, but the whole goal of the deck is really to just spam out a bunch of monsters. You can do it through Hero Kid, obviously the Brilliant Fusion, as well as, of course, the, uh, engine with, uh, Instant Fusion, and even, like, Ib. Um, you can do a lot of different things with this. Uh, again, the whole idea is just to spam out the board with a bunch of monsters, with, which I think a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh decks can do now. Anyways, let's go ahead and go with the deck profile. Shout out to my boy Terry Aki for hooking us up with these plays. But we got the Gem Knight Garnet, and then we have the Destrudo. We have the Trick Clown, three copies of the Neo Space Connector, three copies of the Scorpio, two copies of the Darling Cobra, three copies of Junk Forward, one copy of the Aqua Dolphin, triple copies of Lone Fire, triple copies of Hero Kid, three copies of Instant Fusion, one Fiend's Sanctuary, then we have the Rhoda, Upstart, Foolish, Reborn, three copies of Inheritor, three copies of Designator, one copy of Brilliant, and we have Living Fossil, Excessive uh, Burial, or Overdone Burial as it's known in the TCG, and then Autonomous Action Unit. And then we have the Gemini Fusion, we have Ragin, two copies of the Mud Dragon, and uh, then we have Mannequin Cat, Astrum, which is the important card, and the Surge is very important too. And then, of course, Summon Divine Bow again. Sorry the picture's not here. Hopefully it'll be updated soon. Uh, and then we have Assault, Summon Sorceress, Proxy Dragon, and Code Talker. Now, I did show you guys two different builds, and the other build um, is utilizing Ryu Okami, uh, which we technically covered. If you guys haven't seen the Ryu Okami, I definitely watch that. There's just, Basically, you can infinitely combo into your opponent. You can reset... Omega and then infinitely just start setting cards you basically loop these two cards and then go for pretty much whatever you want in the game Especially with like cyber angels you could you could do some pretty dirty stuff with it But like I said definitely check that out. It's it's crazy uh, Anyways for this build we have the dragon core hexer obviously for this uh, and then we have three copies of Ryu Okami um, And then we have the Shrudo, we have the majesty maiden and then we have cyber dragon two copies of the chicken uh, we got the Quick Draw Synchron, and then we have ABC, and then we have three Witch of the Black Forest, which will then search out your Ryu Okami. We have three copies of Summoner Monk, we have the O Lion, we have three Red Resonator, we have the Jet Synchron, the Lord of the Red, three copies of Resonator Call, one Upstart, one Foolish. Then we have three copies of Magical Mallet, we got the Advanced Virtual Art, three copies of Reload, and three copies of Called by the Grave. For the extra deck, we got the ABC, and we got the Double Rampage, then we got Omega, Arc Light, Baryon, Infinity. Uh, C101, two copies of Cyber Dragon Nova. Of course, these work well, really well with each other. And then we have S0, Suryuja, and then of course your Summon Divine Bow, Summon Sorceress, and Needle Fiber. But there it is, guys. Um, the Divine Bow, uh, Polar Ursa. Let me know what you guys think of this card, because obviously this video was more, more of a showcase of it. I think that this build is kind of better in a sense, because... This deck, technically, you have a little bit more uh, consistency with Magical Mallet and Reload, but this is a more, like, uh, deck that's oriented around, like, one specific, like, way to play, and if you get your combo stop and you don't have that called, you can kind of fold on that. But this one, it has a lot more plays. Like, if one thing goes wrong, well, you have Instant Fusion, you have the Inheritor. You have a little bit more play, technically, with this deck. Plus, I think that the combo of having the Summon Divine Bow plus the Mech Knight Ashram is a setup where you put your opponent in a place where they might just have to fold their hand because it, it almost reminds me of like towers back in the day. It's like, oh, I'm gonna negate a bunch of stuff and oh, or in this case, this card is kind of immune to majority of things and the other card kind of protects this card and this card obviously protects this, the uh, 
the Divine Bow because, again, the way that, the, that this card was designed is to lower its attack until you can summon, like, a monster with one attack and literally attack over it. But this card is like, no, you have to attack me. <laughs> so, again, they kind of protect each other. But let me know your thoughts on the uh, card down below. Do you guys think it's OP? I've kind of heard a lot of people saying it's super OP. Yeah, you might be able to need, like, two effects, but then you should be able to hopefully attack over it. But if your opponent has any back row, then you're looking at some trouble. And, again, if you have, like, Moon Mirror... And any other card to maybe just boost up the attack every single standby phase, you're looking at something that could be a little bit more nasty. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Once again, shout out to my boy Teriyaki for hooking us up. Hopefully you enjoyed the vid. If you did, drop a like on it. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button to always see the latest Yu-Gi-Oh cards in action, like the Summon Divine Bow Link Monster. And if you guys got any cool replays, feel free to go ahead and send them into Asia's replays at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and peace.